What is going on everybody, Zonic here, and in today's video, I'm bringing out Claude Sire. Yesterday was Community Day, and hopefully you guys got one. I hope you guys got good shinies and good PvP IV, so let me know down in the comments which one was the best. Did anyone get a rank 1? I unfortunately did not. Um, now, for my Community Day, I also had my local park was closed down for a firework event set up. So I didn't get my grinding spot that I can go to, so I unfortunately had to do the wander around aimlessly um, to try to get some catches. So I still got like a rank 300 something over there, which is okay, and it was also shiny, but I'm pairing it with Mandibuzz and Umbreon. This is by far probably one of the bulkiest teams I have ever run, and it performed really really well so let me know down in the comments what you guys think about it and let's go and get right into these battles all right getting into the first battle we have claude sire versus swampert on the lead bad lead obviously so we're gonna go ahead and swap into the umbreon get ahead on energy and a rough mid game as well and this is what's cool about claude sire is because of its typing and move set it typically draws out stuff like reggie steel if it's going to be lurking in the back which also frees up mandibuzz which is why i decided to run with the double dark back line i know you guys do you guys remember the uh, nidal queen double dark back in the day well this is kind of the inverse of that it's claude sire double dark um, with uh, just a lot more bulk, right? So we're gonna go ahead and just keep going for foul plays here. Now my opponent decided to go for a zap cannon in that first charge move, which is really interesting uh, because they were hoping to debuff me, but unfortunately it did not pay off. And now I have an opportunity to take this game into the ones, which is gonna be very ideal here. I'm not gonna take switch um, because I don't wanna give up two shields. Uh, but what I can do here is by taking this game into the ones, it's going to leverage what Claude Sire is good at, and that is hard hitting nuke charge moves. Pick your boom, as I love to call it. Now, this is what's fantastic here: is Reggie Steel hits hits like a wet noodle against a Claude Sire. Let's just say that, and because of Poison Sting, I am doing no damage, which means I get to farm down for max max energy as you guys can see zap cannon just it does nothing claude sire is as bulky as an xl azumarill just so you guys have a comparison i'm gonna go ahead and go for the earthquake now as swampert um this isn't gonna do too much damage but it's gonna be enough to get them low and we're gonna go ahead and swap into the mandibuzz and there is a shadow charizard in the back so we have a win con opportunity before us can you guys see it we're gonna go ahead and go ahead or go ahead and go for a dark pulse here to get the final shield and mandibuzz is so tanky all three of these pokemon are tanky this is why i wanted to go with this team leverage that hard bulk that i can survive a blast burn here and get another dark pulse off and this is what this can do is i'm going to uh be able to almost fast move down unfortunately i won't but i can come in with claude sire and poison sting down i don't need to shield as well blast burn will hurt but a hydro cannon is worse so we will go ahead and farm down and because we farm down both reggie steel and charizard we can get to another earthquake in time and yes this is enough to boom Boom! See ya, Swampert. And that is going to be a good game. Very well played. All right. Moving into the next one. Pelipper on the lead. This is a very tough lead and often pairs with Reggie Steel just because of the cross synergies that they do have. Now, what's great about Claude Sire is you could potentially have access to Stone Edge if you want. I decided to go with the default move set, which is not the Community Day move as well. Community Day gave you Mega Horn. You actually want Sludge Bomb and Earthquake or Stone Edge and Earthquake. So we go for the Sludge Bomb here. We're going to go ahead and look to swap into Umbreon now to get ahead on energy. And we draw out another Reggie Steel. Reggie Steel right here, obviously, in the mid-game matchup. We saw what Umbreon can do. We could potentially take this into the ones, um, which then would allow us to do the exact same thing that we did to the Swampert, where we far hard farm down and throw back-to-back -back Sludge Bombs there against the Pelipper, which would obviously KO and get the shield, but my opponent got the attack debuff right there with Zap Cannon. So this changes this whole mid-game matchup, and unfortunately, I won't be able to... Uh, to do as much damage. As you guys can see, there's really going to be no reason um, to try to hard flip this mid-game matchup. So instead, I go ahead and go for a foul play. <clears throat> I'm 
Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look to keep Umbreon alive. Switch Clock is coming back up, so I will shield the Focus Blast. I want to make sure I leave out of here with a fo uh, Foul Play. And I'm going to go ahead and try to swap into Claude Sire now, as we do see the Pelipper come back in. We can survive a Weather Ball right here, and we can also get to a Sludge Bomb in time. And the uh, Claude Sire's only target in this game might have been that Registeel. And that Registeel is now low enough where Dark Pulse and Foul Play can take it out. Now Pelipper goes down, and uh, we will probably see Registeel try to come in and do a very healthy farm down, which we do. But because of Lock-On, I'm going to be able to get to this Sludge Bomb in time. Unfortunately, not able to get to the Earthquake, um, but this... Uh, this Sludge Bomb right here is going to be able to get the Registeel, well, lower. <laughs> it's already low. Like, how low can you go? So now, this is a tough decision. I'm going to come in with Umbreon and hope that uh, I could get the Foul Playoff. But unfortunately, we lose the uh, the CMP tie right there. Zap Cannon will take us out. And now I'm going to come in with Manibus, but they had a Superior in the back. This is beautiful. Now, I wasn't thinking it was going to be Superior. I thought it may have been... Um, something like a Metacham. Uh, so Mandibuzz is obviously going to be the best option for that. So we're going to go ahead and just go for Aerial Aces right here. And Superior obviously is a better endgame matchup for us. But this is going to get very, very close. And that's because of the game timer. If you guys didn't know, there's an internal game clock that only allows you to battle for five minutes. So we're going to hit that, and you might hit that yourself in a lot of these games because of how bulky this team is. And as you guys are going to see, I'm going to go ahead and just go for the back-to-back -back Aerial Ace right here. And I know my opponent's Switch Clock is coming back up, so they will swap into Registeel at some point. So all I need to do is build up to double Aerial Ace and call it a day. So we're going to go ahead and no shield right here as we, uh, we're going to go ahead and just load up. And we will see that they do, in fact, decide to swap. And notice the clock at the top. I have 20 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and throw the Aerial Ace now to get rid of the Reggie Steel so that it takes it out. There's eight seconds left on the clock, but I lose CMP tie, so I shield. But thankfully, the charge move is not eight seconds. It's five, and I'm able to get to this Aerial Ace in time because I CMP tied takes out the superior with no time left on the clock. Good game. All right, moving to the next one. Claude Sire versus Lantern on the lead. Lantern's a tough one to deal with, and it is Water Gun as well. So I'm a bit suspicious. Maybe it's the superior Medicham backline that I've run, but I don't want to automatically assume and make poor choices because of that. But what I can do is um, recognize what's in front of me, and that's gonna be a Water Gun Lantern, and know that, you know what, I could take this into the ones and go for back-to-back -back Earthquakes here. Now, the Lantern can win in the ones because of the Water Gun damage. Unfortunately, I'm just not gonna be able to um, do as much. Maybe if I had Mud Shot, we could win, because you guys will see here. We're gonna go ahead and shield the Surf, but we're gonna go for the, uh, the Earthquake. The Earthquake here doesn't do enough damage to take out the lantern so i decided to swap out a number on now if we had mud shot there it does and sure enough a metacham comes in and this is obviously now giving me two pieces to the puzzle water gun lantern on the lead metacham into the umbreon there's a there's a good chance not 100 percent, but there's a good chance there's a superior in the back as was a very strong team that i ran this weekend and made a video on now i don't want to just assume just because i made a video that that is the team but I'm, I'm reading that it could be, so I'm going to put my trust in Mandibuzz to win this game for me. If it's something like a Bastiodon in the back, or it's a Charmer, so be it. You know, that's what it is. But because of the uh, what I've seen so far, we're going to put our faith in Mandibuzz to try to win this game, as I will go ahead and go for foul plays, as we do take out the... Uh, and it's going to be a Lantern that swaps in, so we'll be able to... Uh, um, farm down now. This isn't going to be enough for Thunderbolt. I can safely let this go It's just going to be a surf because of the energy or the charge moves they did before and sure enough it was superior in the back so Unfortunate for my opponent that I had a Mandibuzz um, Obviously Mandibuzz does very very well in the meta It's extremely tanky and with superior as the best grass type Pokemon out there right now I know some of you may say Shadow Venusaur is might be better um, but I think just based on the performance that I've seen, I think the Aerial Ace Frenzy Plant combination along with the bulk 
just goes a lot further um, than the like the raw more glass cannony damage that we see from a shadow venusaur both are good but i like superior better um, but because of that we're going to be able to win this one as i will swap into claude sire and fast move down and then the lantern is going to go down as well so that's going to be a good game very well played all right moving the next one claude sire versus shiny lickitung now lickitung on the lead um, screams to me, maybe an ABA team. Um, it could be ABB, and what I mean by that is there could be like Defense Form Deoxys and Metacham in the back, um, so that the Lickitung does well against the Ghosts and, and yada yada. But I have a feeling this is an ABA line, especially I'm in the 2700s right now, um, especially with the ELO range that I'm at, so I'm gonna keep Claude Sire alive just in case there's a steel back there maybe reggie steel maybe bassidon heck maybe even a carbink back there um so that i can keep it alive for that now my opponent is not swapping out they're staying in which gives me information number two this could be um a team that's weak in the back to umbreon it could be ghost type pokemon psychic type pokemon I mean, if it's the Defense Form Deoxys and uh, Metacham ABB line, then I called it completely wrong, but we're going to go ahead and just keep the Umbreon in here and read that, you know what, maybe Mandibuzz has a lot of play against their back line as I go for last resort. Now, I thought this might have just been enough chip damage, but it unfortunately wasn't, so they will swap out. It's going to be a Shadow Alolan Sand Slash in the back, which is very interesting because now I can get to a foul play here in time and really chip down the health of this uh, this Alolan Sand Slash. And because it has Shadow Claw instead of Powder Snow, my Mandibuzz is going to do a lot better against it. Now I decide to give up a shield here on the Drill Run, as I do have another foul play. I want to get this A Slash out of the game. A Slash is a tough Pokemon to deal with for this team. We do get the final shield, and I will swap in and go for the Sludge Bomb right away. This isn't going to be enough to KO, but it does get the shield, um, as I did leave with a lot of stored energy, so I was hoping they lost track. Obviously, you don't want to get hit with an Earthquake. So we let the Ice Punch go through, but they decide to swap into Lickitung to try to get to a Body Slam, but they don't make it in time, which now opens the door for Claude Sire to potentially boom. And let's see, it's going to be Sableye in the back. So it makes a lot of sense why they couldn't necessarily swap into uh, into Umbreon. And also my call on maybe this is an ABA team because there was in fact an Alolan Sand Slash in the back. So it was that other steal. I will swap into Umbreon here to just soak the energy um, and, and force their hand to throw because otherwise I'd get to a foul play. And uh, unfortunately, we don't get to it in time, but I'm still sitting very good with Mandibuzz. I'm not concerned about the return. I'm more concerned about sh uh, Shadow Ice Punches here from the Alolan Sand Slash. So I'll let the return go through. And we do see the Alolan Sand Slash come in, so I'm going to go ahead and go for the Dark Bolts. But Mandibuzz, pairing with uh, Claude Sire, really strong today. The bulk has been just shining through. And I think overall, um, the toughest Pokemon to deal with. Um, is likely for this team is going to be something like a Powder Snow Alolan Sand Slash. So, good game. <coughs> and speaking of, here is a Shadow Alolan Sand Slash. Now, this is a Powder Snow Shadow Alolan Sand Slash. So, this is a uh, maximum danger. But you know what? Claude Sire is a threat too. Don't let this sleepy little face fool you it has an earthquake so you gotta respect it boom see ya absolutely decimated they were taken by surprise i swap into umbreon into the jellicent and that is going to be a good game as they decide to surrender wake up we're halfway through the not halfway through the video we're like two-thirds of the way through the video good game all right moving the next one sableye on the lead okay so initial reads of this team, Sableye on the lead, obviously we have two good answers in the back and there's a very good chance they have a steal on the back line just to handle the potential fairies that they might be matched up against on the lead. So I will protect the Claude Sire here and look to go for an Earthquake. Um, and then I want to try to load up on energy and go into Umbreon 
as we do get the even shield. So yeah, I'm definitely reading. There's a steel back there. I don't know what it could be, but I'm going to go ahead and swap into Umbreon now and uh, look to overload on energy. They will decide to go for return, which is fine. Umbreon is extremely tanky and can handle this, and I'm fine with the, uh, the Sableye unloading its energy. And they're not swapping out as well, which is pretty interesting because uh, it gives me the opportunity to uh, have maybe a Mandibuzz sweep. So I'm going to go ahead and try to go for the CMP tie right here to get rid of Sableye. Maybe Claude Sire will have a bit better matchup, but they go for the double return, which is fine. I'm going to go ahead and go for foul play here. This should be enough to take out the Sableye. Excuse me. Sorry. And uh, so Sableye's gone. Perfect. There is a steal in the back. It's a Lolan Sand Slash with Powder Snow. Now, I'm going to pause this right here because this is a good learning lesson and good game to my opponent who reached out in Discord for me. Um, what you're going to see here is I make a mistake. we got to take into account what is happening before us. We have a one-to-one -one shield um, and a Lolan Sand Slash with Powder Snow is on the field. Now, this is not Shadow. This is Normal which I think normal can survive an earthquake. So what we're going to do is look at how much energy I have in this situation and health. In this situation, I should be going for double earthquakes. But I try to get fancy and go for a sludge bomb right here. My opponent makes the call. They no shield. I then realize that this game is over and I decide to surrender. So good game to my opponent, but that was a huge mistake on my end to not go for the free double earthquake right there and if we land it obviously they survive but then i um, snarl down now talking to this trainer um on discord they had a shadow venusaur in the back so that mandibuzz would have been very happy having land an earthquake against the a slash and then sweeping with mandibuzz so good game to my opponent but that was a mistake on me all right moving into the next one we have skeledurge on the lead this whole team loves the Skeledurge, and Skeledurge loves this whole team. It's a it's a toxic relationship because of the damage that can be put out. So I'm going to go ahead and shield the Shadow Ball, and then I'm going to look to go for the Earthquake here, obviously, to one-shot the uh, Fire Croc over there. And then uh, we're going to look to see if we can catch a charge move on Umbreon. So I'm going to go ahead and swap, but they counter-swap, and they come in with a Skarmory with steel wing i haven't seen this pokemon in a long long time back in the day probably seasons ago years ago skarmory used to be meta it actually used to be the arguably the number one flyer in the great league and the only other option was altaria those two were the terrors of the sky but i think this skarmory is coming back because of the carbink that seems to be very popular in the uh, the higher ratings and skarmory with stealing can tear through that so we're gonna go ahead and take that down we're gonna send it back to the stone ages as uh, a shadow venusaur is gonna go ahead and come in and mandibuzz can easily take this one so this is gonna be a good game unfortunately to my opponent i'm gonna go ahead and counter swap into the Mandibuzz to just get ahead on energy. No need to shield the Sludge Bomb right here. It's not threatening. What is threatening is the Dazzling Gleams um, from the Skeleturs, which does decide to swap back in. So this is totally fine. We still have Claude Sire as well, and we have Umbreon as a sacrificial swap, um, potentially here in the end game against a Venusaur. So we're going to go ahead and go for the Dark Pulse. Almost boomed. Almost boomed. Had to pull, pull back the trigger on that one. And this is why I love Mandibuzz as well, is its bulk. It is the Flying Umbreon. It is extremely tanky as we handle that uh, uh, da uh, Disarming Voice. Sorry. And uh, Aerial Ace now here is going to be getting the final shield from the opponent. I counter swap into the Claude Sire and go for the Earthquake to close this out. Sludge Bomb would have been enough, but I wanted to throw the Earthquake right here to cause a little rumble. Boom! Down goes the Venusaur, and that is going to be a good game. Very well played. All right, moving to the next one. Claude Sire versus Azumarill. You love to see it. The uh, the little bunny right here is not going to like this Claude Sire. Now, they're deciding to stay in, and now they swap out into Golbat. So I'm going to go ahead and swap out into the Umbreon. And Umbreon can take this one. 
Um, it might get a bit dicey if they decide to double shield and go nothing. They're obviously going to go nothing but poison fangs. Um, but in that situation, Claude Sire, depending on what they have in the back, might be able to sweep anyways. Even if it's something like Charizard back there or something. Um, but uh, we're going to go ahead and just look to go for foul plays. Not give up shields yet. The third Poison Fang is the one that we need to look out for because that is the one that could get us um, very, very low. So we're just going to go ahead and just keep going for foul plays. Get this Golbat out of there and farm down. Um, now Azumarill will be coming back in, but instead, I thought Azumarill was going to come back in. Instead, they come in with Metacham. So this is perfect. We have great alignment. We have great energy. We have two shields still. So we're going to go ahead and put that Mandibuzz on the Metacham and then uh, not really worry too much. Even though they do have potentially access to Ice Punch, it's not enough to KO. Mandibuzz is, uh, is extremely tanky. Now, they decided to go for Power Up Punch, which I thought was interesting because maybe they're Power Up Punch Psychic, but there could be an Ice Punch lurking back there, but I'm okay. I'm just going to keep going for Aerial Aces. Claude Sire can take this game, even against in this situation against the, uh, the Metacham. So they do have Ice Punch actually, which is fine. And now they do decide to swap into Azumarill. So I'm going to go ahead and come back in with Claude Sire, which does have basically back-to-back -back Sludge Bombs ready to go. So we do get the shield. We're going to be able to get to another one. I'm going to go ahead and give up a shield on this one, obviously. Don't want to get hit with Ice Beam or Hydro Pump. It is going to be play rough. But Claude Sire with Poison Sting and Sludge Bomb can make quick work and core break. A lot of Pokemon when shields are in this situation, the one to zero, it's absolutely destructive what this thing can do. And along with its bulk, again, is as bulky as an XL Azumarill that you got on Community Day for free. You'll love to see it as my opponent decided to um, close the game. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of stuck here. This is going to be a good game. I will swap back into Mandibuzz. Um, but yeah, good game to my opponent. Um, unfortunately for them, I had good alignment. Um, I had strong meta Pokemon and, uh, Claude Sire obviously puts in work against the Azumarill with the, uh, Poison Sting and Sludge Bomb. So that's going to be a good game. This team overall, pretty solid. Nothing but positive sets with it. Um, felt very good running this team. Unfortunately, I was, I was trying a different Claude Sire team and I went 0-5 with it. So I lost a ton of rating, and then I built this team, um, and then reclaimed, reclaimed that back um, with some really positive sets. So uh, very good games to my opponent, but overall, um, these this team is very strong. Claude Sire is here. It is meta. It is strong. You're going to see it a lot, and it has the opportunity to core break teams. Just because the simulations... Um, state that you know it can't beat certain Pokemon in certain shielding situations doesn't mean that applies directly to the uh, live gameplay because as you saw right there a situation where you know it loses loses to Metacham yeah well this Claude Sire now has the one to zero shield advantage um, with lots of energy so uh, Metacham's not going to survive through that so overall very strong team and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed today's video so like always thank you for watching I'll see you in the next one